It means that sickness. We need more power. Attention residents, it has come to my attention that some of you are planning an unauthorized excursion this evening. Let me inform you that no unauthorized excursions are permitted, and as such we will be patrolling the halls with extreme vigilance. Any of our elderly patrons found outside of their beds after lights out will be returned to their rooms and their bingo privileges will be revoked for our Friday night fish mush and bingo extravaganza. This time, we'll be giving away a packet of salt and pepper to each of our lucky winners. We are aware of all of the tricks that might be used to facilitate your escape, including leaving a puddle of you-know-what on the floor, disguising yourselves, hurling bedpans, leaving wet floor markers, and releasing nitrous oxide into the halls. <laughs> Additionally, it is forbidden for you to utilize any secret doors located in the facility. These doors go back to the days when our retirement home was a brothel and are considered dangerous. All we want is for you to be safe. This is why we go to the trouble of wrapping each of you in bubble wrap every morning. This is why we pre-chew all of your food and why we only allow Candyland board games in our entertainment lounge. Speaking of our entertainment lounge, we have added some new movies on VHS for you to enjoy, including High School Musical, High School Musical 2, High School Musical 3, and Teen Beach Party. Of course, all of the singing and dancing scenes have been removed in order to keep everyone's heartbeat manageable. If you get caught trying to escape, you'll miss all of these cinematic films. So, consider yourselves warned. No one escapes from Shady Pines Village. Welcome to Shady Pines Village Retirement Home, otherwise known as Bedpans and Broomsticks from Mayfair Games. In Bedpans and Broomsticks, you play either the staff player or one of the other four elder inhabitants trying to get out for a night of fun. The game is for two to five players, and one player will always be the staff player trying to catch the others and put them back into bed. The goal for the elder players is to find an exit and get out. The first player to escape the retirement home wins the game, while the staffer player must catch a number of elder players equal to how many elder players are in the game. You can catch the same person more than once though, so don't think you're out of the game if you get caught. There are a stack of room tiles that are used to reveal the hospital layout as the elders move through the hospital. All the elder players start on a single tile in their little beds, see the little beds? And move through various doors revealing more of the hospital as you go. When tiles are revealed, either one or two stuff tiles, and yes, it's called stuff in the game, is placed on the new tile. Face down, of course. Plus, you might also reveal a staffer's desk. The staff player then places one of their staff members at the new desk. So let's just say right here. And there's no desk on the other. Let's just say right here. And there is the staff player's desk. The staff player has five nurses and one doctor that can be placed. The difference between the two is that it takes two nurses to capture a patient, while the doctor can do it on his own. Stuff has various effects and can be useful to help the elders or to help the staffers, depending on what it is. You can hold up to three stuff at a time, and as an elder, you're going to need some stuff to escape successfully. You can discard two stuff and draw a new stuff in return at the end of your turn if you are stuck with a bunch of stuff that you can't use. The other big help for the elders is that something that I can't really fit in thematically, but it's an integral part of the game. Uh, these are the decoys. Each elder starts with two tokens. One is the real you and the other is the decoy. And the only way to tell the difference is that the real you has a black dot printed on the bottom. 
You can look at each one anytime you wish, but it makes it harder for the staffer's player to catch up with you if they don't know if it's the decoy or the real you. When caught by any staffer, the decoy is removed from the board. You have the option at the beginning of your turn to place the decoy back into one of your beds or placing it back in the same spot as the real you, and so become useful as a decoy again. Each turn you roll dice. There's three dice. Whee! And move around the board. You roll for both the decoy and the real you separately, moving around collecting stuff and looking for a way out. You won't reveal an exit until the second set of elevators is placed. These are elevator tiles. And there's a whole complicated process for placing tiles, elevators, and exits that I'm not going to get into. You can place stuff during your turn, and so can all of the other players. One other benefit that the elder players receive is the secret door marker, which they can place on the board at any time in the event of an emergency. You keep this door as long as you can because you never know when you might get trapped with no way out, or you find yourself just one short hop away from the exit. As tiles are placed, and the tiles are placed by the staffer player, some of the nurses and doctors will get placed in some of the revealed rooms. See? The staffer player goes last, and it only takes a turn or two until all six staffers are on the board. The staffer player gets to move three staff by rolling the dice, and will attempt to corner the elder players in order to neutralize them. If an elder is caught, the staffer takes one of the spare elder tokens to show he has captured it. There's a bunch of spare tokens included, and there's also extra stands in case you want to put your little elder dudes in a stand as well. And the little markers, that gets covered up when you put it in a uh, standy thing. But you can look and see which one is you and which is the fake you. Yes, the doppelganger randomly running around the hospital looking just like you. Kind of spooky if you think about it. The game goes on until an elder gets to an exit space. And here are exit tiles. See? Little exit right there. Or the staffer catches enough elders to win the game. That's really all there is to it. That's how you play bedpans and broomsticks. Bedpans and Broomsticks from Mayfair Games is from the same designer who created Nuns on the Run. This is a similar style game, however the player's movement isn't hidden. Instead, you have a decoy to help distract the staffer player from knowing exactly where the real you is. I hated the rules in this game. While the game itself is fairly simple, the rules are put together in a way that actually makes the game harder to understand and unnecessarily complicated. There are three dice, and the elders, nurses, and doctors each roll them in a different way in order to figure out how far they can move that turn. There are also typos that lead to a few head-scratching moments. For example, the definition of the walker stuffed tile says you can move two spaces in the rules. But the tile itself says three, even in the picture in the rule book. The tile placement is also more confusing than it needs to be, as there is an entire sequence of events that happens as each tile containing an exit symbol is placed. That determines when an elevator is placed, when an exit is placed, when to stop laying tiles on one floor and start placing them on the other floor. Well, it's spelled out in great detail in the rules, but it left me more confused than understanding of what needs to happen. After a few plays I had it all figured out, and gameplay became much more exciting. You would think that it would be tough for the staffer to win with all of the decoys running around, but it's exactly the opposite. If you can win this game as an elder, you have really accomplished something. It took a combination of luck and holding onto my secret door until the very end in order for me to win the one game out of the half a dozen plays that the elders actually won. I'll admit, I was sweating it out right until my final turn, and in that way, the game was fun and exciting. You will get cornered from time to time with no way out. That's when the stuff becomes very important, as it can provide you with a much-needed escape. It seems like the staffers are everywhere, and getting trapped in your bed can really take the fun out of the game. 
An important tip to remember is that you will end up with multiple beds of your color in the hospital. If you get caught, you can choose any of these beds of your color to go back to. It doesn't say it in the rules, but we assume that a player could not be caught if they're in their own beds. If you do get trapped in bed, move your decoy to another bed and go around collecting stuff until you come up with a way to escape. All in all, this is an okay game, once you get past all of the rules confusion, and can lead to some exciting moments. I prefer nuns on the run, but if the theme of that game appalls you, perhaps you'll find escaping a retirement home more to your liking. Thanks for joining me in this review of Bedpans and Broomsticks from Mayfair Games. Let me know if you found this review helpful by leaving a comment or sending me an email at elliot underscore miller at voiceofe.com. Make sure to subscribe to the Voice of E channel on YouTube, as I'll have plenty of gaming, entertainment, and comic book coverage this year. And it should be a lot of fun. Thanks again, and until next time, get me your bad signal, you need more power.